find me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get going. So we are recording this uh, just so those who had registered and were not able to uh, come by that they can attend or if you want to rewatch this later on. So again, my name is Araceli Garcia. I'm the ELA TOSA for middle school and high school for uh, our curriculum instruction and assessment uh, department. And today we have as guests Ricardo Racinos and Teresa, if you want to go. Ricardo and Teresa, if you want to say a little few words there to everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us. Go ahead, Adesoli. Sorry, interrupt your intro. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, so Ricardo and Teresa have been doing a lot, especially in the world of technology and looking at AI. And I know for a lot of us, I've been a high school English teacher for 20 some years, 25 years. And I know that this has always been, you know, an issue is, you know, are students really sharing their authentic work? So today we're going to talk about, you know, this world of AI, artificial intelligence. And we know students know about it. They probably knew about it before we did. And they might be using it. I'm going to say they probably are. And so how can we work it? Did Araceli freeze? She might have frozen. And share lots of ways that we can work together with artificial intelligence, but also make sure that our students are using it in an ethical manner. Um, and towards the very end, we'll have space for some questions. And I'll be sharing a little bit of what we can do to bring out those authentic voices. Um, and maybe you can get them off uh, the technology for a little bit so that they can use those speaking skills, listening skills. So. We're going to keep on, I'll probably repeat this a few times. Um, make sure that you have your name, your school, and also please stay till the very end as that's the way they keep records and also so we can give you the timesheet. So I'm going to go ahead and pass the baton over to Ricardo and Teresa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Araceli. Thank you for that intro. Um, please feel free to pop in and interject at any time. You know, we're on the same page when it comes to this, especially. So um, welcome everybody, uh, Reimagining Literacy at the Age of AI. If you were in our um, training last week, or if you went to the one last year as well, this is somewhat of a co continuation of our training. We'll repeat a few things for those who were not there, um, but this is kind of a next level training if you've went to their, our intro of artificial intelligence. So I'm um, leveraging digital tools to foster creativity. And if you don't know who we are, um, we are from the DRIVE department, the Data Research and Innovation um, under Lilia Picado. My name is Teresa Castro. I'm one of the tech tosas in that department. And I'm also a professor and coordinator for CGU. And I am Ricardo Racinos, technology tosa, and also a senior instructor for John Hopkins uh, CTY. So we have been presenting this topic all around and our purpose today with you, um, oh, did you want to get them on the Canvas course or do you want me yes. to do this first? Yeah, so you know what, let me go back actually, that's a good point. So uh, we just put a link on um, the chat and if you want to join our Canvas course, because our presentation today is very interactive, so it should automatically take you to the course and you should be able to just join it on the top right, okay? Go ahead, Teresa, I'm sorry. All right, so as you are joining the Canvas course and Ricardo put it inside of the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and go over our purpose. We always start with why we're here in the first place. So the purpose of this training today is to empower participants with a deep understanding of how artificial intelligence can revolutionize literacy, writing processes, and various ways to show mastery. So our goals with you today is to define this new technology if you haven't heard of it before, or if we could build off you know, last week's training, um, set clear expectations, leverage AI tools to overcome writing challenges and foster creativity, and look at some alternative strategies for successful teaching in a world of AI. And as always, our non-objective is we don't expect anyone to come out of this as experts because this world is ever-changing and we don't want you to throw out anything that you've been doing because we know you've been working so hard. So um, let's just add this as another layer, right? Okay, so uh, those of you who are getting onto the Canvas course, great, just get in there. We're not doing anything in there yet, but we will be soon. Um, we are gonna go ahead and bring you to this Padlet to kind of let us know where you are in the artificial intelligence journey. Um, I think Ricardo, he just put it on the chat right now. We're not filling out the rest of this at all. Just the very first column that says, comment on the gift that shows how you feel about artificial intelligence. So these gifts are already here, just comment on the one where that you relate to the most. The first one is what is artificial intelligence? If you feel like that's where you are, go ahead and leave a comment right there. 
if you feel like you've heard of it, but haven't done much about it. Oh, I, that was me. I was just testing it out. <laughs> you can leave a comment right there. And the next one is I've tried it a few times. You could leave a comment there. You could just give a heart, you know, to kind of let us know. And I use it regularly. You can comment there or the very last one. I should be leading this training and we will not be insulted in any way if there are any of you who feel like you should be leading this training. So go ahead and take some time and let us know where you are. Um, I hope that pilot is working. I didn't test it out after we edited it. Yeah, we got people uh, writing. Oh, I, I do see it in there, right? We're talking about literacy. We're talking about writing. So Padlet is a great tool to get our kids to write, right? So just a great tool. All right, great. So where are most of our comments coming in, Ricardo? Just so we can kind of tailor how quickly we go through items. So two here. hearts there. Uh, I think people are two hearts on, uh, I use it regularly so far. All right. Uh, so there's, you know, we're, um, right. people, people know good. about it and they've used it. Three, so three, we have quite look. a range. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue. Yeah. So before we, 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 um, dive into ChatGPT, right? We want to establish what artificial intelligence is, right? And it's basically just a computer simulation of human intelligence, basically a machine that is programmed to think and learn to do things that typically require human intelligence. That includes visual perception, that includes speech recognition, that in, uh, includes decision-making and language translation. So AI has been around from a long, long time ago, 1950, okay? AI has been around, but it has evolved, okay? So we've gone from artificial intelligence to machine learning to deep learning. And in 2021, we got generative AI basically, right? And this is what we are talking about today. And what makes um, generative AI different for us is that basically um, it, um, it's the way we interact with it basically, okay? You can sit in front of a computer and feel like you're talking to someone on the other side. And that's what made it different. And it creates new written, visual and auditory content giving prompts on existing data. We're gonna play with it today, okay? So we're gonna be seeing generative AI and there is so much out there, okay? The, the typical generative AI will be our chat GPT right here, right? Or if you're a Google user, maybe our bar, or if you're a, a Microsoft user, co-pilot, right? But there's other ones that are specialized on different things. Like if I wanted to create a quiz, I can use question well. If I wanted to differentiate reading level, I can use diff, right? If I wanted to use uh, AI tools and canvas, I can use that. So there's a lot of ones that are specifically uh, doing one thing and they're good at it, but at the end of it, they're all generative AI, okay? That's what they are. So um, if you wanna hear about any of these ones, we're definitely here to support. And you know, um, Today, you're going to see us try everything with Copilot. Copilot is basically ChatGPT for the premium version. Instead of us paying the extra $25, our district, because we have the EI um, license, has given this for free to us, okay? Not only it's for, it's free, but also I love um, some of the benefits of Copilot when we use it, and you're going to see this, okay? First of all, the searches that you do are not linked to your individual user account, okay? Very safe. Uh, also, the prompts that you have, and you'll see that today, are not saved, okay? Also, the data, it's not used to train the language models, okay? As teachers, we have this specific copilot. Think about ChatGPT if you were using that. They're using your answers, your prompts to basically train the model, okay? And finally, no one at Microsoft can view your data. So we definitely... Uh, highly recommend that you use Copilot if you decide to use AI because it is free again. It's ChatGPT 4.0. It has uh, everything that is included with ChatGPT 4.0. So you're saving yourself $25 and also the benefits of the privacy, okay? And before we start talking about literacy and before we start talking about you know writing, right, and speaking and listening, let's talk about our students and let's talk about what they are and who they are, right? So we're talking about the Gen Z learner, right? We're talking about the student that is the true digital native. You know, in the past, we used to talk about like digital immigrant, right? And our students are digital natives, right? These are the true digital native students, right? They have been exposed to the internet, social networks, and mobile systems their whole life, okay? They learn by doing, okay? And as you might have noticed, they love videos. Mm -hmm. They do. <laughs> uh, they prefer collaboration and social learning. That's the way they learn. And they expect to not technology to be integrated into assignments, assessments, and activities. That is your, your, uh, your uh, GZ learner, uh, Gen Z learner, basically. Okay. Here's some pictures in there. And, you know, as we talk about um, literacy today, right? I honestly think that in the age of AI, we need to rethink literacy because it's not just about reading writing, speaking, and listening. But I think as educators, we need to understand the impact that AI 
has on our society, and especially in our classrooms and education, okay? Because when we talk about literacy, it's also very important that we teach our students about AI literacy, okay? These are the tools that are going to be with them right now and also in their future, okay? And I don't mean that we have to teach each student how to build AI. I don't, I'm not saying that every student is gonna be a computer science, uh, uh, you know, going that field. But what I'm talking about is every student should understand AI's limitations, implications, and ethical considerations, okay? So that's very, very important, okay? So when we talk about literacy, let's make sure that we also talk about AI literacy. Okay. And finally, if you came to our uh, training last week, we talked about uh, in a world of AI, let's teach our students how to leverage their humanity. What do I mean by that? So AI lacks creative expression in human experience. So in this age of AI, I think we need to help our students develop and use the skills and qualities that make them human, such as creativity, empathy, leadership, and ethics, right? Those are the skills and qualities that are going to help them succeed in a world where, where AI is increasingly present and powerful, right? At the same time, ensuring those, that they learn these qualities is going to teach them to use AI for good and not for evil, if we wanna put it that way, okay? So that's what I mean when I say leveraging their humanity, okay? All right, Ricardo, just click through this so that we show all of them. So there's a bit sure. of review from our um, intro to artificial intelligence. And um, I don't know where you fall on this spectrum here, but um, it goes all the way from the very top where students plugged in prompt AI, copied response and submitted it to teacher. Do you feel like this is plagiarism or cheating? You don't have to answer, you could just answer to yourself. And we go all the way to the bottom where a student wrote all assignment content without consulting AI or the internet at all. So is that the only way you would accept an assignment if they did not consult the internet in any way? So where do you fall on this spectrum? And we're not gonna read all of it, you could see that it's quite a quite a range here. And um, for me, um, I, I change depending on what I learn about AI and things like that. And but you know, in this spectrum, we're talking about getting assistance from AI to help us with our assignments, to help us with our tasks. And so, which of these would you consider cheating? Which of these do you think is relevant to our students' future, right? And which of these would you use? in your work as an adult. And I would admit I would use <laughs> this and a lot more in my everyday life. But also um, before we go on to the next slide, if we think of it, we're talking about AI assisted, but what if we replace that with a student, with another person, would that be okay? Now it's kind of, now it's considered collaboration and that's fine, right? But why is it not fine if you consider, um, consider using AI? So uh, we're not saying right or wrong. We're not saying whether AI is good or bad. That's up to you. We're just here to give you the information. But, you know, it's really, really interesting to see where you are and how that changes as you learn more things. So let's go ahead. All right. So <laughs> this is kind of a continuation of that conversation, right? So when we first heard about ChatGPT or other artificial intelligence, you know, we're like, oh, that's cheating. Every bit of it is cheating. And then we had Ricardo here who researched a lot more really early on was like, it's not cheating exactly. Um, but this is a bit of a deeper conversation. I think Ricardo, you wanted to kind of talk about your perception of plagiarism and cheating, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, regardless of where you are on this chart, as Teresa said, okay, um, what I do want to say is that I, I, as an educator, I'm going to agree with you. And I think we all agree, right? Completely using AI to turn in an assignment does not help our students learn or improve their skills, or even demonstrate mastery, right? However, right, if we can teach our students how to use AI for brainstorming, idea generations maybe, right? Uh, or maybe inspiration, maybe it's not plagiarism, right? And, and, and I have a problem with that word, that word plagiarism, because that's taking someone else's work and, and turning it as your own. Well, hmm. well, whatever you get from ChatGPT or Bar or Copilot was not created by a human. So is it plagiarism? It doesn't fit the definition, right? But, you know, going back to it, right? How do we show our students, right? That what they're writing or, pro or, or, or producing for us can be enhanced with AI. You know, how, do we, how do we find that, that, that balance for us, right? And I think we have a big responsibility, right? And I'm not gonna read uh, this right here. I kind of highlighted some important uh, uh, words that I thought were important, but let's think about it uh, for us teachers, right? I think we really need to educate, educate our students about the correct of AI in our classroom while also rethinking how AI fits in each of our assignments and also in our classrooms. Uh, what does AI look like when it's augmenting the learning, right? When do we need to have human only moments for our students, right? We need to find, I think uh, Araceli mentioned that, when does it become the human only moments for learning, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not simple as saying, yes, you can use it, or no, you cannot use it, 
But I think we really have to provide guidance for our students. And that is the key, providing the, the guidance and actually teaching our students how to use this tool, right? And that kind of brings us to um, being really explicit on your expectations and the consequences of using AI in different ways. So these are some examples of some letters to students or some um, acceptable uses in a syllabus, right? So it says here, ex this whole column right here, acceptable uses, here's an example, rewriting a reading passage at a simpler reading level so that they could still get the content, right? So that is an acceptable use, but a non-acceptable, unacceptable use is asking things like, what are the main points of the reading passage? So you, you're not really doing thinking on your own, you're asking the AI to think for you. So um, very explicit expectations and not, you know, you don't go into a class and you don't mention AI at all. Of course, some of the kids are gonna use it and then you have this big consequence for them using it when you haven't even addressed it. So we know it's here, you know, that was kind of understandable in the beginning, but at this point, we know it's here. We need to be, we need to explicitly include it in our expectations of our students in our classes. Yeah, and you know, and you know, uh, this is just a sample that we gave to you, right? Some of the unacceptable uses over here might be acceptable in your class, right? We're not giving you this is the way it's gotta be done, yes. right? Because I'll give you a perfect example for me as a teacher for John Hopkins. Okay, brainstorming, I'm okay with AI. Okay, it's part of the learning process, right? Uh, but sometimes think about the student. I think about accessibility, right? And the student that might get caught up with like, I don't know where to start, right? <laughs> and they'll procrastinate and they'll never turn in the work, right? So I'll think about brainstorming, maybe I'm okay with it. Drafting, I'll be honest with you, maybe 40% is okay. And they need to highlight in red what came from AI, right? That becomes a learning opportunity for them, right? Why is there so much red? Did you wait until the last minute to do it, right? Did you like the AI uh, 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 work that was better than what you wrote? It's a learning uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity, right? Uh, in peer review, Maybe they can put their work in the AI. Why not, right? A final draft for me, 15%. And can be AI generated. And it also has to be highlighted for me to see it. So you are going to find as you start looking at AI, where you fall and where do you think it's acceptable and when do you think it's going to be unacceptable? Okay, so that's completely up to you. Okay? And of course we're, we're it also, it depends on your lesson too. What, it, what is the purpose of that lesson? You know, what exactly mm -hmm. are you trying to teach them? What skills are you trying to teach? So that will change, that, that will change your use, whether you're gonna use that at all or whether you will allow some of it. Um, but anyways, let's continue with this conversation. So will AI widen the digital um, divide? So, so we're talking about equity at this point, right? So on the left over here, we have the old digital divide. Well, it's still around right now, really. Um, what well, we are one-to-one -one with our students, but do the students have high-speed internet at home? Do they have access to these tools? That was the divide that we were focusing on before. And now we have this additional divide or this refocus on who is empowered to learn with and about AI. You know, when this, when AI first came about, we had some districts that, you know, kind of panicked a little bit. Uh, for example, New York, they decided to ban ChatGP, ban the use of it for the entire district. But what did that create? that created an equity issue. So students who had access to phones, to data, to high-speed internet at home were able to use it while other students were not able to. So you're just creating this equity issue. But are we creating the divide ourselves by not teaching our students the proper way of using artificial intelligence? So if you have a class next to you who is using it, you know, teaching their students how to use it properly, but you're kind of afraid to use it, and that's totally okay. But that's also, you know, you have to think of that comparison as well, because if you don't show your students, someone else will, or they're going to learn it another way. So it is our job to kind of get on top of it. And, you know, you know, as you become comfortable, bring that in. But we don't want to be the reason why this divide is bigger, right? Because we're afraid to address it in class. Yeah, but as Teresa said, the reality is that it is here and it's not going anywhere. So, uh, you know, I, I wanted to go out there and I wanted to see what our students are saying. What are they saying about, uh, you know, about AI and the use of it, right? And it was great to hear the students say, AI isn't thinking for me, it's making me a better thinker. And I thought it was pretty interesting to hear from a student that actually is using AI. And I actually wanted to show you a very honest response from a teacher that actually welcomes AI, right? Because she, she didn't want to be policing the use of AI in her classroom. So I'm going to play this. Tell me if the sound works, Teresa, okay? I hope it's working. It's time for an update on how my allowance for the use of AI and things like ChatGPT in my high school classroom to learn how to be a better writer is going. 
First of all, huge props to my admin for allowing me to take this adventure and do this experiment. But as I looked at these writing tools and the opportunity for detection of AI, I thought I'm gonna spend the entire year trying to justify whether or not the writing that my students are doing is actually theirs. And that just didn't sound like a job that I wanted to have. So I've been really open with my students and told them they're allowed to use ChatGPT. I've also told them that I wanna be talking with them about it as we go. I've taught them how to use better prompts. We've talked about how to use it in an effective and ethical way. We've talked about how problematic AI can be, specifically in terms of bias and the way it was developed. But it's here and it's part of my students' world. So we're gonna use it for the time being rather than allowing them to see it as a cheater tool and use it behind our backs. And I just got my first round of first and second rough draft paragraphs for essays from students. And they're doing it. Some of them are using it and some of them aren't. But the ones that are using it are using it in ways I've taught them to use it. Doing things like taking problematic sentences that they just are not figuring out how to format in a way that's fluid. They take those sentences, drop them into chat GPT and ask them to reword. They're writing comments to me in Google Classroom as they submit these rough draft paragraphs about how chat GPT has helped them along the way to get where they're at today. One student actually put in both her paragraph that she originally wrote as well as the one chat GPT rewrote for her and had a discussion about why she thought the tool had helped her. And it absolutely helped her, but there's still so much more to do with her writing. It didn't do the work for her. It made the work she was doing that much better. What I didn't foresee in this adventure was how much this meant the students were going to be allowed to talk to me about the tool. How even though I wanted to demystify it, what they're now seeing is being allowed to have an open conversation with something they thought was a no-no before. And what seems to remain true is that although these AIs can do a number of pieces of the writing for the students, it still really struggles to connect evidence to argument. So that's a real specific place that I'm going to be giving a lot of points toward in a final essay because I really want to see that my students are interacting with the AI enough to create those solid arguments but so far so good what questions do you have so you know i like her honestly you know she wasn't willing to fight that fight right trying to go and you know i used to do this as, as an ap spanish teacher i used to go and you know oh you didn't write this copy and paste right and put it in google and see if i could find it <laughs> you know because i was trying to catch that student that i was like oh he didn't write this right and honestly you know as we think about it right going back to writing essays only in class or hand and paper right can only hurt struggling learners and doesn't get our kids ready for the future as we as we think about that okay we're going to come back to this particular saying and but with that said right there is a lot of tools out there that you can use to see if ChatGPT or BAR or Copilot basically was used on a student paper, right? Our district has um, Turnitin.com, right, through Canvas. It's uh, available for high school and now it's coming to the middle schools. Um, so that, that's a tool that you have, right? Are you willing to fight that fight, right? Uh, I can tell you that the CEO from OpenAI actually came out and said, a determined person will get around them, okay? Even though we're trying to use that particular tool and now, don't um, don't shoot me for this, right? I'm gonna give you my personal opinion of it, okay? So I have decided not to use these AI detectors, okay? Uh, OpenAI pulled their own AI detector saying that it doesn't work. It was 26% accurate in testing, right? I have a better chance going with a coin and saying, head or, head or tails, did he cheat or did he use ChatGPT, right? Let's be honest, right? They are fake, they don't work, okay? Uh, and, and, and as a teacher, what happens to that student that I falsely accuse? You know, we might lose that trust, right? Uh, uh, that is gonna cause them to stop going on that learning journey with us. That's mm -hmm. huge for me, right? Uh, I wanna create a space where students are going to learn to grow, right? And have a chance to make mistakes, right? And I don't think AI detectors create that, okay? Uh, just to add, I'm not gonna go to everything, right? But they discriminate against non-native speakers. That's big for me, being an ESL student, okay? Just being honest. So that's just my opinion on how I feel about them. They are available for us and they're out there, but I wanted to make sure that I kind of mentioned that. Okay. Uh, before you, can you go back to that, Ricardo, real quick, just to yeah. clarify, can you explain how it discriminates against non-native English speakers, just so that they understand kind of the science behind that? 
So the, the way I understand it is that basically, you know, I have a very basic vocabulary, right? <laughs> you know, and the way I write, you know? Um, so when I write and when I use this like uh, words that are always used, it seems to pick them up more, just like it keeps learning. So if I go in there and I keep uh, putting samples of my writing out there, right? If I'm a professor and I'm always, you know, uh, creating content and putting it out there, right? It's getting this data, it's being fed this data. And eventually it might say, you know, recognize that data and be like, oh, you use AI because it's thinking that this writing by this professor who puts this out on the world all the time, it's something that it was created with AI. So just, you know, just that gives you an idea of what it does basically, right? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, um, so, you know, Ricardo was talking about all so, so many different tools that use artificial intelligence and generative text AI and generative image AI. And so um, just keep in mind as we go out there and start to venture into using all these different tools, when you use them with your kids, make sure that, you know, if you are teaching them how to use it and they're using it with your permission, make sure that you are following the age um, requirements because this is legality at this point. Um, so um, for example, there's the Bing AI 13 years or above, if they're under 18, they need parent permission. So just keep that in mind. You, you know, you're like, I'm excited to show them how to use this, but make sure your kids fall into the right way. <laughs> Ricardo's highlighting for me. Those of you who use Canva, I love Canva. Woo -woo, we're all excited. This is another example. If your kids are under 13, they're not allowed to use it with you unless, you know, you know, it says right here. No, it doesn't say right there, but there has to be some sort of permission or 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 um, some other terminology that we were, we'll probably get back to you on that one. But um, so if you have if you're using that with your kids right now and they're not 13 and above, you know, just be careful. We're just looking out for you at this point. Um, so so many things um, is the data being used. Oh, sorry. Data used for the model training. Go ahead, Ricardo. You're highlighting. Go ahead and explain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about Copilot, right? I know that the data at the Copilot version that we're using is not being used to train the, the, the model. Right. So over here, you can actually tell if like, you know, that company is actually using your data to train their model. Now, I will be concerned with that particular item, right? So just, you know, be aware of that, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, so setting expectations for the use of AI. We touched upon this earlier when we were talking about the syllabus. Um, use it as a tool, not a crutch. So yes, we, we keep talking about it. We're not saying that it needs to be in every lesson or even half your lessons, but, you know, we're making sure that our students know how to use it, but know how to use it. You know, properly and at the right time, right? So you cite your sources, AI for understanding, not for shortcuts, AI for learning, not just task completion. It's a tutor, not a reader. So I know you wanted to talk a little bit about this, right, Ricardo? Or we're gonna we're gonna move on because we're, we're okay. looking at the time. <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna I think... skip this. We already talked about the syllabus, so let's go mm -hmm. ahead and skip that. Yeah. So we're gonna start with our uh, first um, exercise, right, Teresa? Go ahead. Yes. So we're gonna start, and so <laughs> it's already exactly four o'clock right now. We're thirty minutes in, and we just started our first exercise <laughs> with you. We have quite a few things we wanted to squeeze in. Um, so we're gonna again in the chat, we're gonna put um, the link to our Canvas course. And while you're waiting, just to see how everyone's doing, because you've been sitting here patiently for thirty minutes listening to us talk at you can you please do the check-in real fast you know there's a little check-in we were supposed to do with you in the beginning but we were trying to get mm -hmm. through really quickly so go ahead and click on the check-in and this just kind of lets us know um how you're doing if you click on that as a student it should bring you um to something that says how are you feeling today and i'm gonna go ahead and click on it on my end And from my end, it looks a little bit different because I'm actually a student. Do you want to share your screen, Teresa, so they can see sure, it from your point sure of view? Sure, I can. Let me, let, me get, let me get us out of the way. Let me bring that in. So those of you who are already in there, it's pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead. And I'm, I'm just going to demo it for those of you who are not in the Canvas course. If you're the type who just wants to watch, and that's kind of how you um, do best with new information, I totally respect that. So if you're just watching, we're going to demo for you so you know what everyone else is doing. So here I am in the Canvas course. And those of you who use Canvas, please know that this is there for you. This is actually your, uh, you're able to do check-ins with uh, Microsoft Reflect inside, directly inside of Canvas. So here I am. I clicked on it. How am I feeling? There's different resources here. This is a whole different training, by the way. Yeah. Lots of braid <laughs> breaks and stretch breaks and color, whatever. We're not going into that, but it's there for you just in case you didn't know you want to try it. So here I'm feeling right now. I'm kind of, I'm over here because I know we're running out of time and there's so many things we want to cover. And I'm just going to um, select, I'm great. Next, um, I am motivated. Submit. And that's all. 
And so Ricardo's just, do you want to share your screen, Ricardo? Or do I, I will. Yes. Screen? Yeah. Let me go ahead and share it. So he's going to show a screen real fast to see what it looks like from a teacher's end. Um, for those who, oh, I'm going to stop sharing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Then let me go ahead and share go my ahead. screen. So, so that you can, can see, see from a, this is kind of a side. <laughs> we wanted to do in the beginning and we ended up coming back. And we sorry, completely <laughs> forgot about it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Let me, let me share my screen. So yeah, what a great opportunity for us to do a check-in with our students, right? And notice that uh, the, the six or seven of you guys that actually responded, I can actually see just by looking at it, how my class is feeling. A lot of you guys are happy and some of you guys are falling asleep, right? We're putting you to sleep right now, right? And some of you guys are tired, right? So just really easy to be able to check in on you guys and check in on the students. Um, I can actually see the names if I wanted to, right? If I wanted to show names, I could do that, but we're not doing that today. So that's available in Canvas, a whole different training, but let's go ahead and go back to our um, AI writing assignment template. All right. Okay, we are going to do our very first writing assignment. Ricardo, did you want to drive or do you want me to want me to use share? Speaking? You're the student, so go ahead and share again. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to I'm sorry. I, I'm a streamer. It's a little bit easier to flop between screens, but here you go. Okay, so here I am. Um, if you're in our Canvas course, we are in the very first one, AI writing assignment template. This is a great template that you can use for yourself. You could use it with your students. If you've never done an AI assignment with your students, actually teaching them how to use it, this is a great one to use. So we wanted to share you with you as a template. So I'm just gonna click on that one, AI writing assignment template. So go ahead and click on that. And then you're gonna make a copy of a deeper dive and it's actually a template copy. So you're gonna click on that and this is what it looks like. So when you click on it, it looks like this. And if you don't know how to do this, by the way, the template preview, you can ask, we will show you how, so that you can actually see what you're gonna get before you actually, so you can look at it. And if you like it, you can get a copy for yourself by clicking on use template. So go ahead and click on use template. And now you have a copy of this for yourself inside of your drive. Okay, so go ahead. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that for the sake of this exercise. So I'm just gonna click on use template. And now it'll save automatically inside of my drive. This is my copy. No one else is getting affected by this in any way. So um, let me just give you an overview of what this assignment is. And we're gonna give you five minutes to go ahead and try it out yourself. So it is four pages long. The first one says, go to Copilot or ChatGPT. So these are links. So you can choose, you can go to Copilot, you can click on that, or you can click on ChatGPT, it's up to you. And give them your writing prompt. Here's your writing prompt. I would just highlight this and literally stick it inside of Copilot or ChatGPT. And I'm just gonna change that part that's highlighted. My guilty pleasure movie or TV show is blank. Please help me write a persuasive short essay about why it is the best. So just very quickly, we're going to put that in there and you're going to put whatever you pasted, you're going to put it right here. And then whatever ChatGPT gives you, we're going to stick it right here. Okay. And then the second page, it says, we're going to ask ChatGPT, can you give me another version of that? And then we're going to paste the other version. Okay. Or you can just create your entirely own prompt if you want to choose a different prompt. Like, oh, I like that, but can you please narrow it down this way? So it's up to you. You are the prompt engineer. You can use, give me another version or you can do your own prompt, okay? And we're going to do it one more time. And then at the end, if you were doing this with your students, your final version is here. So create your final version here. So you would go back through the first three slides, copy and paste the three responses and kind of jumble them around. You're not going to have time to do this today but you will have time to at least try it once or twice just to kind of get in there with ChatGPT. And you can see this as a whole assignment that you wouldn't do in one sitting with your kids, but this is a great kind of guided way for you to show your kids how to use it properly. So we're going to give you a moment. Can you go to page four again, Teresa, just really quick. I'm sorry? Go to page four on it. And can you explain that little, the arrows really quick? So, um, so right here, I use this because I use this because so, as you pull things from ChatGPT, your students would have to explain why they decided to use those things over other things. Okay, so that's just part of the assignment. So again, this is not the one way to do it, but this is it, a way to introduce it and show it to our students. So we're going to give you a moment to um, go ahead and enter this. And we're going to use this prompt later on for some other activities. So please at least do it once. Um, we're going to be talking about your guilty pleasure movie or TV show. And you're gonna to have to defend why it is the best. And we're gonna do a few different activities with that. So if you're in our Canvas course, great. Um, if you're not in our Canvas course, Mr. Sinos, do we wanna give them access in case we wanna try it if they're outside of the Canvas course right now? 
or we just yes you want me to put the link somewhere is that what you want me to do yeah, them to yeah. Able to get that template? yeah i'll do that and do you want to you want to demonstrate how to get to copilot uh or chat gpt so they can see and how you will put yep. the prompt in i'm gonna there? go Thank ahead you. and do it right now so those of you who are just want to just watch i'm gonna go through this whole exercise right now in the five minutes while everyone is working on it on their own so go ahead and work on your own or you could watch me do it it's entirely up to you you have five minutes four minutes starting right now so i'm gonna pretend i'm you right now i'm just gonna i'm gonna click on um which one do you want me to use, Ricardo? Either one. Copilot. Uh, Copilot, because again, the uh, data. <laughs> sure. I'm just gonna open the link. Here I am in Copilot. Um, does it matter if I choose more creative or more balanced? At this yeah. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was putting that the, the template uh, on the chat. So once you get to Copilot, notice that you have more creative, more balanced, and more precise. More creative is basically ChatGPT for the premium version that you're not going to pay for. So what Teresa is going to do is she's going to go sign in on the top right, okay? If you notice, she's going to sign in, and then notice that she is has the option, and I can't see because the big... The, I'm going to hey. use my work account, mm -hmm. work and school account. And that's what you want to use. And notice what happened. It says protected on the top right. And it also says that it's not going to save your data. And you do want to use more creative always. More creative? Okay. <coughs> yes. All right. So those of you who are working on your own, go for it. Go ahead and do your own thing. Those of you who are watching and just kind of hanging out, here I am just following the directions. Oops, just kidding. That's not what it was. Let me grab it. There's that prompt. You're going to know. A guilty pleasure movie or TV show is. <laughs> Do I have one? What I've been watching. Okay. <laughs> no judgment. Okay. I'm just going to say Twilight because that's what my daughter has been into lately. Okay. So I'm just going to copy that because I need it later. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. So it's going to go ahead and uh, generate that for me. So while that's happening, I'm going to go back to the assignment and I'm just going to replace this text with the actual question that I gave. So here's my actual question that I gave. And then when Copilot is done, I will paste what it says here. It's just, it's amazing. Within seconds, um, it can come up with this information. So I get, I get our kids. Like it's so tempting to use this sometimes. That's why we have to show them how to use it constructively. So sorry, I keep talking. The rest of you are kind of working on your own. Go for it. I just want to make the point that if you notice the green text, your personal and company data is not being saved. So that's why I would recommend doing this and also it's protected. Okay, so it, I could give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I can go ahead and, you know, I can copy it right here. I just click copy. Mm -hmm. and I can, what? Go ahead, what is it? I was going to say, notice also that it actually gives you citations of where they got some of the info. ChatGPT does not do that. And right. that's that's really important too. So if your kid, if you want to allow them to use it, they should at least give credit from where it came from. So here it is. <laughs> You'd have to reformat that a bit. There you go. And then I would go a second time and you can come up with your own um, prompt or you could just simply say, can you give me another version of that, please? Which is what I'm going to do for the sake of time. So it, let me see. Can't click on it. Why? Do I have to start a new one? Oh, well, let me do it. Um, scroll down. Does it say stop responding? Continue. Saying, there we go. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to scroll. Sorry, guys. All right. So that would be the same thing. I would wait for another version. I would paste it in. So that's pretty much all you had time for at this point right now, everyone. You have about one minute left. But you understand <laughs> at the end, I see um, Araceli kind of nodding her head. So at the end, you know, they would kind of go through and put this information together. And explain why they pick parts that they picked mm -hmm. and, you know, and make it their own, basically. Yeah. We'll wait for about a minute, right, Teresa? So hopefully, you had a, hopefully you had a moment to at least test out and chat to a little bit if you've never used it before. And if you have used it before, maybe you decided to use your own prompt. That is totally fine. I'm waiting for this so I could paste it in. But again, that is your own copy that you can use and reuse um, with your kids. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to stick this in right here. here. Ooh. Oh, wow. Do you even have pictures? <laughs> so I would reformat that. You kind of get it. All right. So um, hopefully you had a chance to try that out. And you do have the template. If you can do it today, at least you have the copy of that template that you can make your own. So it's now 410. So we are going to continue.
Let me see. All right, um, Mr. Sims, are you ready to get back to the slideshow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Let me share screen. So Thank back you. to our presentation. Okay, so that just, just a, a, a good starter how to use it and what, with our students, right? So that's just a, a, a good idea to start using it. But something that you might have noticed that is such an important uh, part of teaching our students is in the world of AI, the new engineer really is the prompt engineer, okay? How do we come up with those prompts? How do we teach our students to uh, uh, be able to come up with the best question or prompts that, they, that, that the program understands it. And I just wanted to just share this really quick, right? Because um, the, the AI job that pays up to $335,000 and you don't need a computer engineering background, it's the um, prompt engineer. <laughs> wow. So some people are getting paid a lot of money to become a prompt engineer. Okay, I just wanted to kind of share that with you. <laughs> so just, just, you know, just so you know that that, that, that that was kind of out there as we talk about this, right? Go ahead, Teresa. All right, so this, oh, this is still you, Mr. Racinos. Was it? So yeah, so so as we, we think about it, right, the, the prompt engineering, right, um, we wanted to provide this uh, prompt starters, right? Create an outline and then the book title, right? List ideas, right? Summarize, right? Design, these are words that are gonna help you and help our students get the best responses, okay? So this slide is mine, but it is only mine because Ricardo said he can't pronounce the first word, which is English not language word. learner. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm an English language. <laughs> I had to Google it. Um, it's iterative. I said it wrong, by the way, the first time, but um, I can relate to our students. So uh, for the best experience with an AI generated response, you should start with something called an iterative prompt. Um, the more specific you are about what you're looking for, the better the result. So um, iterative prompts should include the following statements and um, persona. Um, this is when you ask the tool to take a role. So it could actually be a person in history. It could be, you could debate with it, right? Um, objective, tell the tool exactly what you want it to generate. Be very specific, okay? I tend to be um, more broad and then I become more specific as I see what it produces. Um, audience. You should, um, you specify who the information is for. This can be age ranges or a tone, like what tone you want it to use and boundaries. Set the limitation and direction that you want. Yeah, pretty clear. Perfect. Thank you so much, right? And as we keep talking about prompt engineering, right? We have another, your <laughs> second activity for- You laugh every time. <laughs> your second activity for today is actually how to be a prompt oh engineer God. to create um, your own image, whether it be a Funko, whether it be a, a Minecraft character, whether, do they look like me? What do you think? Some of them do, some of them don't, right? Uh, but it's all about prompt engineering, right? So we're going to actually have you do this for us. And for this one, you are going to have to use Copilot and Teresa is going to demonstrate how it's going to go. But think about personalized learning, right? Think about how our students will be engaged trying to create this Funko character that is going to look exactly like them, right? And they're writing at the same time they are writing, right? So Teresa, you want to go ahead and um, show them? Uh, I'll stop. Um, uh, All right. So hopefully you're in our Canvas course with us. Um, go ahead. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, oops. Hold on. I need to share my screen now. There you go. Hopefully you're in our Canvas course. It's easier to get there this way. But if not, we'll share that link with you. Um, but here we are. We're going to our second assignment here, Prompt Engineering with Microsoft Copilot and Designer. So that's what we're going to select right now. So go ahead and click on Prompt Engineering. So we're going to click on that. And here we are. And here, this is just super fun because I mean, you saw what we kind of created. That was kind of funny. Um, but this is just a fun way to introduce, you know, images with generative AI. And you can use these prompts and literally paste them in and just change some of the words so that it will create what you want. So um, we're going to go up here to Copilot. So I would click it right here. And I already had it open from our other assignment, but it's OK. Make sure you are more creative or it's not going to use DALE, which is our image generator. So for me, it always defaults to more balance. Please click on more creative. I was like, it's not working. And he said, oh, you forgot to click on more creative. So make sure you're, and it's in the directions as well. Make sure you switch it to more creative. <laughs> and then what you would do now, anything, you want to do the Funko Pop one? Do you want to know the, you want to do the Couch Patch doll? Do you want to do the penis character, Lego minifigure, Minecraft character? Just pick one, pick any of them. Uh, I'm going to do the fun co pop just because it's the first one up here. You would simply take this and you would paste it right here and then just change the name, change what you're wearing. I'm just going to grab one that I did 
before because this one says Ricardo. So I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna paste that in here. This is one that I did earlier. I just changed it to my name. I said I was wearing a skirt instead. So however you want to do it, I'm going to click create or submit. And so um, we're just going to wait to see what it comes up with. And for the rest of you, just take about, take these next three minutes to go ahead and create something of your own, whether it's a Funko or whether it's a Cabbage Patch doll, a Peanuts character, entirely up to you. And we'll share um, the co-pilot. So it's, it's there it is, it's still happening. Um, Ricardo, do you mind in the chat if I put the go ahead the co-pilot? As you do that, so notice that uh, uh, what Teresa created right now might not be exactly what she wants to write. So you have the opportunity to keep talking because it remembers, okay? So now you can be like, no, I want you to make my skin a little bit uh, darker, right? No, I want to make sure that I have long hair, right? No, I want to make sure. And you can continue to recreate it until you get it the way you want it. So our students are writing and having fun with it. <laughs> you know, it just kind of shows the students the importance of, you know, being accurate with your prompts. And it's just a fun way to show them how to create um you know, images as well. So we'll give you maybe um, two minutes to create your own image, regardless of what it is. And while you're doing that, I'm going to try another one because, I mean, why not? So I'm you doing know, this. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, when you if you decide to use this with your students, right? I, we gave you the examples of the Minecraft and the, the I think we had, a, I don't know if we had a Barbie in there. I think we have a bunch of them. But on one of them that we created the prompt, I actually used the word Christmas. And as I think about it, you know, I just have to be sensitive, right? Because I maybe I should not use Christmas, maybe it's a holiday or something else, right? So that's something that I had to go back and learn as I was creating these things. So I took Ricardo's Christmas one and I changed it to birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. notice that it's going to build on the one that she created. Are, mm -hmm. you know, we know some students who may, may not celebrate. So we all we want everyone to be able to participate. So um just doing this to kind of keep us busy for those who are just watching. And for the rest of you who are trying, go for it. You have about a minute. Mm, left. Look at that oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. so I probably would let it know that I'm a little bit more tan <laughs> or I have black hair. Um, but And you can keep writing until you get it right. Exactly. And it said I was 80. Oh, I'm, I'm quite insulted. <laughs> <laughs> it probably took it from the 1980s figure. All right. So a few more seconds, Ricardo, and we'll move mm -hmm. on to the next one. Yeah. So these are just samples that you can use with your students if you wanted to, or, you know, um, again, um, uh, notice that we are using um, Copilot because ChatGPT wouldn't give you this image creation right now, because again, you don't have the premium version. So that's part of the premium, but you have it here. Okay. Wow. This is a really long minute. Are my, are my clock stopped? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen again. Okay, sure. That was just uh, the, the shareable prompts uh, from social media that we wanted to um, kind of um, share with you as a, as a fun activity for you to do, right? Uh, but as we think about how we teach our students to use this, Teresa, go ahead. Yes. Okay. So um, AI assistance in student assignments. So there could be low assistance all the way to high. We're not going to read this whole thing to you, but for example, this first row in writing, it's it could start with AI checks and correct spelling or grammar. It could be as simple as that. So low assistance, right? And you can go all the way to the right where the sample prompt is, here's a rough outline for my essay on climate change, refine my arguments and generate a draft. So that's high assistance, right? So kind of think of the range and think of your purpose. You shouldn't be doing the same thing over and over and over. You're teaching them different ways and different levels of assistance, right? So there's research here, critical thinking, um, just we won't read through this whole thing, but so many different ways to use AI. In the same now, I, I want to make a point, right? As we talked about AI, and it's been around for a long, long time. Remember at one point, like <clears throat> um, spell checkers were considered bad, right? And for me, I can tell you as an English language learner, the more I see the word that I keep misspelling, I, it helps me learn it, right? So we're okay with spell checkers, right? So why are we not okay with some of this technology right here? Yeah. Okay. And as we continue, so, so you know, when we talk about this, right? And when we discuss this idea of uh, uh, shifting our idea about writing in the age of uh, AI, right? Um, I do have to say that, uh, you know, as we think about literacy, uh, we might need to change our perspective on writing and welcome that creative communicator, 
okay? Uh, where human imagination and emotions blend with technology to create that engaging story or those meaningful connections, okay? So these are, uh, I'm just gonna go through them uh, fast. And, you know, let's be honest, right? When we talk about um, that effective communicator, you know, and we talk about the core of writing, right? In the age of AI, helping our students succeed in writing involves fostering creativity. Think about, again, the Gen Z learner, right? Critical thinking, right? A deep understanding of language to comprehend AI's capabilities, right? So how are we gonna use it with our students? And, you know, um, as I think about it, right? And I think about beyond that traditional text on paper, right? Uh, and today's writing, now we do have to go beyond the traditional paper-based text by incorporating visual elements, interactive features, right? That allows that Gen Z learner that we're talking about to communicate using various multimedia and interactive content that they know. And you know, as I was thinking about this, right? Do I really wanna make that jump, right? I go back in time and I think about Socrates. Remember Socrates? He believed that writing was not an effective means of communication. And he really believed that face-to-face -face communication speaking was the only way to transmit knowledge. Right. And we evolved, right? And writing became the next way of doing it. Right. He was like, he was completely against writing. He was like, no, we're gonna lose our gift to you know to communicate face to face and speaking, right? And no, what writing made it better, right? So maybe now incorporating this interactive content, this multimedia might make it even better. We don't know, right? We don't know what it's going to look like in the future, what that writing is going to look in the future. You um, already saw the power of editing with AI, right? If you got to, to do that uh, particular template, right? When we were able to put it in there and then look at the second version, third version and bring it all together, right? So it's, 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 it's a great tool, right? I think about my AP Spanish literature students. Well, what I have, I would have given so much to have this tool for the students to go back and read, write, get feedback, you know, look at it again, right? As I mentioned before, right? And finally turn that paperwork where AI is acceptable, the 15% that is in red. And now I, I have a better paper, right? There's a better um, construction by that student to create that particular paper for me. And, you know, finally, when we talk about um, academic writing, I think we have to start looking at it uh, in a holistic approach, okay? Uh, what do we want our students to do in our classes, right? I think we need to evolve the, and switch our way of thinking and look at it holistically, right? While academic writing is essential, right? We need to talk about um, communication, right? It's not just writing, it's speaking, reading, active listening, and being creative, okay? And we're gonna actually do that right now with some of the tools that we're gonna present to you. So, um, Teresa, go ahead. Oh, I think this was you. Is it me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Okay, so uh, we're now transitioning into our next activity. Um, we're not going to have a chance to try all of these things, but we will demo them so that you can try at least one of them. So like what Ricardo said, you know, showing mastery, there's so many ways to show mastery and not just writing. Writing too, very important, um, but there's different things. So so here we are. Here's a piece of writing that we came up with um, with ChatGPT on the left. You can use this later for your activity or you can reuse um, what you used earlier, like your favorite, what was it? Um, your guilty pleasure TV, guilty TV pressure show. tv or movie mm -hmm. that'll be more fun use that one instead okay and so these are the things that you can answer here you could say what images help to explain it so just just think of you know this is different thinking now right just um, another layer on top of the writing and we could use tools such as adobe express or canva what's the elevator pitch for this how would illustration or narration bring this piece to life create your own podcast different ideas um, that you can show mastery and on top of the writing as well. So um, let's go. Yeah, th think about uh, our students making the learning their own, right? Uh, I might not be sure if they use AI. If I don't ask mm -hmm. them to highlight it, I might not be sure that it, you know this is something they wrote, but now I'm asking them to explain it with images using technology. Now I'm asking them to use an elevator pitch in their own voice with Microsoft Flip. Now I'm asking them to illustrate something, right? So now they're basically taking this particular writing that only I get to see. And this has always been my problem, right? And I think Araceli, Araceli agrees with me, right? We want the kids to share what they're producing. We want the kids to be able to put it out there, right? So now I can see it through Book Creator. Now I can see it through a podcast. Now I can see it through Microsoft Flip. Now I can see it through Canva, right? I'm seeing what they're producing, right? And they're explaining this writing in different ways using technology, okay? And um, so we're gonna kind of look at it right now. So for the first part, uh, when you decide to use our uh, little essay or the one that you wrote, uh, or you had ChatGPT write, we're gonna ask what images help explain this. And you can do this with Adobe Express or Canva. And I wanted to just kind of show you, um, as we talk about Canva, um, just wanted to show you two amazing AI tools in Canva. There are so many AI tools inside of Canva, but I wanted to show you two that you might be able to use in the classroom, okay? So let me go ahead and go to Canva. 
uh, two of my favorites, okay? The first one, I can come in here and I can say, create a design and I can say, I need a presentation. So I'm in Canva, we all have um, access to this and then use it, using Magic AI, I can come and say, um, uh, presentation, and I'm just gonna type it, sorry. Uh, presentation about the water cycle. I'm just gonna use that one today. And I'm gonna click. And notice how AI actually created the whole PowerPoint for me. And I can come in here and I can look at it and say, you know what, this is something that I do like. So let me add all of the 11 pages. So now my whole slide deck has been created as I talk about the water. So think about AI as our um, teacher oh. assistant, right? <laughs> as, our, as our formal support, right? So I created this whole thing just by asking it to use AI, right? And I, obviously I can come in here and change things if I don't agree with them. I can still use magic, right? To change it if I wanted to. Think about the student that might need the extra support with um, translation, right? I can come in Canva and go to translate, right? And I can say translate pages and I can say all pages. So then I can just say done, translate, and I can choose this, the language, right? So I'm just gonna pick anything right now. Uh, just pick Chinese, simplify. Translate, and notice what it's going to do. It's going to take that PowerPoint that I created for my class, and now it's completely translated. So teachers, think of this, you know, I mean, I mean, of course, for, we could think of things from the student point of view, but from your point of view, <laughs> if you need a PowerPoint on something, this is a great place to start. And you could change your content, but look at what it created for you. So many, I mean, and that was within seconds. <laughs> Yeah, very simple to do. Uh, um, another tool that I love with um, with Canva AI, just really quick, I can go to Magic Studio and I can design videos. And as simple as going in here and saying, try Magic Design, it's going to open it for me and it's going to tell me, what do you want to do? Well, I want to use this five pictures, okay? Or four pictures. And I want you to create, I don't know, uh, a commercial to promote our PD on AI. Generate. So look how simple, right? So for me as a teacher, it's gonna save me so much time to be able to use some of these tools to create. It created it for me, it added music to it, and it's fun. Posting like every day. Now you know. Comes up with the all secret that. is <laughs> out, right? <laughs> so yeah. So just got a couple of tools that you can actually um, use, right, in your classroom for you as a teacher. And I want the students if you wanted to use it to support you. Okay. <laughs> there were so many. We could do like two days of training just for Canva. On Canva, but yeah, we don't have time. <laughs> Adobe Express. Um, this is another place as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna. So go ahead and go to the next. Um, oh. oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Is that my no, fault? No, oh, don't you again. It's okay. Okay. You know, I'll just continue. Um, so we're just going to show you, I'm going to show you Adobe Express. <clears throat> and um, you just get there from, you know, from your class link, you just click on Adobe Express. And that should bring you right here. And there's so many things here. I'm very similar to Canva, um, but we have the full license here as well. So um, I'm going to go to generative AI. And you have some simple options here, text to image, generative fill. So you could actually take a picture and ask it to remove certain things or replace certain things. That's pretty awesome. Um, text effects as well. So um, type an image. So let's say I was doing my argument about um, the twilight. I don't know if it'll get it because twilight's the, the um, title, right? Um, oh, say, draw, uh, hmm, picture of, uh, hmm. Well, I, it's hard to think of one, Ricardo, for the book. <laughs> uh, how about how about a poster for the movie Twilight? Oh, know. there you go. <laughs> Create a poster. I've never tried a poster before. Okay, this will be exciting. Okay, so you simply click on that. I had it doing simple stuff before, like a sea otter eating an Oreo. You know, those are those are kind of simple, and so it takes a little bit of time for it to think. And to bring something in, um, but let's give it a moment. And in a moment, we're going to give you time to, you won't have time to try all of these things today, but you will get to at least try one thing. Um, oh, look. Why? It, it, 
it doesn't do a great job of writing yet, as you can notice. So you will have to again the prompt engineering. Or maybe I spelled it wrong. Maybe it was uh, me. You also have the ability to say comic, or you could have done that as digital art, or you could and you can be very specific with the prompt engineering that you are. Um, another one. I know Ricardo wanted me to show two. Um, oh, can I just show one for the sake of time? Uh, yeah. I, oh, are you okay? But I, I love that. That the last one, okay. the third one right there, the fonts. It's effects. amazing. The text mm -hmm. effects. Is that what you mean? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So. There's so many ways to use this, Ricardo. You can correct me if you have another way, but I love like puffy, sparkly font. <laughs> to decorate your classroom, right? It creates your own fonts. <laughs> it's hard to find like sparkly gold font of things. It's hard to find. So you can just wait Give and a see second. what it mm -hmm. comes up with. It takes, you could see that it's taking time. At first, you're a little bit disappointed, but it's okay. It's just patience at this point. And <clears throat> we're going to wait and see what it comes up with. And then you could change the text after that. Oh, there it is. There oh, puffy and sparkly. I love it. And then I can um, I can put my name there and it will change it. Taking some time. It's thinking. It's thinking. <laughs> my name's so big. You can see what the letters are coming one by one. But you can see, you, you know, those of you who do work with graphics, it's hard to find a font with certain elements. And so this is great. This is a great tool. So anyways, that's there for you to use as well. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, Ricardo, for the sure. sake of time. Yeah, let me go ahead and um, continue. So that was Adobe Express and some of the AI tools available there. Okay, so um, maybe we wanted to ask our oh, students me. to, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, continue. <laughs> so that was Adobe Express. Use book move creator, on to right? <laughs> so here's... So here's Book Creator, and Teresa's going to Creator. So I'm going to stop this. And as Teresa's setting this up, every single one of you has access to the full Adobe Creator license through Canvas. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, as a teacher, go through the platform through Canvas or through Classly. Go ahead. I can't see your slides, Ricardo. No, maybe it's just me and my connection, but um, are you still there? <laughs> Am I still there? Am I still there? Oh, you're talking. Okay, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and share a screen because I think he's telling me to move on to Book Creator. I think I might have lost connection. No, I, I got kicked out, but I'm back. <laughs> but... <laughs> I was like, I got him. <laughs> Doing a job. Okay, so let me go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay, so we're talking about Book Creator here. And um, the way we use Book Creator, the best way is inside of Canvas. And so I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and go to the Canvas course. And later on, when we give you some moments, um, you're going to choose one of these things that we're talking about here. We talked about Adobe Express and Canva. I'm just going to go straight to Book Creator just because this is the easiest way to do it as a student. Let's pretend my teacher assigned this to me. I'm going to click on the link right here. And I don't need to log in. I don't have to do anything. It takes me straight to the assignment that my teacher wants me to do. Um, oh, it should have signed them in, but I will just go on to this one. Sorry, I'm not a true student because I'm... Oh, it's okay. I'll sign back in. <laughs> I'm not a real student, so that's probably why I did that. But your students wouldn't have to log in at all. Um, uh, Book Creator is a whole other training. I see some familiar names in here, so I know you, a lot of you went to our training last December. Um, but let me just show you, um, I think, two of our favorite tools to use in here. It is still signed. Ricardo, I'm going to give it one more try. And if it doesn't, I'm going to um, let you move on and I'm going to come back. Oh, here we are. It's here. Oh. I think it's because I think it's because we some, some of us have some of us have switched to HLPUSD.org as an email, and that's why it's doing that. I'm so sorry. It was just in there. Okay. Uh, Ricardo, we'll come back to it. I'm going to sign back in. I think it's because mm -hmm. I went to Canvas as a student, but I'm a teacher in book creator. So it's my, causing an issue for me. That might be the reason why. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. We'll move on to the next one and come back to this one. So let me share my screen. So that's Book Creator, and Teresa is going to show it. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and try to go as a student, right? So, um, you know, we all are familiar with Flip, right? So what's the elevator pitch for this, right? So now the students are going to have to talk about that essay that they wrote, and in their own words, they're going to have to tell us what will be the elevator pitch for that, right? Um, so you all know how to use Flip. I just wanted to basically show you two tools that you might not be aware of Flip. The first one is uh, Topic Copilot, and the other one is how we can kind of... Uh, bring apps together and spark conversations with Flip and Copilot, okay? So let me go ahead and go to Flip right now. So I'm just gonna open it right now. So I'm in Flip and notice that um, in here, I can go in here and I can go create a new topic, right? But maybe I don't know exactly 
you know what, the, how I want to word it, I have the ability to go to Topic Copilot in here, and I can say, okay, so I am talking about the water cycle. And I am talking about uh, for elementary students, generate ideas. So now uh, Microsoft is going to use Copilot to say, where does rain come from? What happens with water? So I can decide which one is going to fit the learning that I'm doing, and I'm going to click on it. So I'm going to pick where does rain come from. Notice what's going to happen. It's going to create my topic title, but it's also going to create three questions for my students to respond inside of Flip. I did not have to come up with the questions. I basically use Copilot to come up with the title and also to create the questions that I'm going to use. And again, as a teacher, I have the ability to go in here and change the questions, right? If I don't like it, or if I want to use my own question, right? I could do that too. So that's kind of a, a great um, way of using it. Um, also, uh, how about if we were to bring Copilot and, um, and Flip together, right? So maybe, and I'll do this really quick, okay? So maybe I want to use Copilot and Flip for students to finish a story. So maybe I go to Copilot, mine should be open, and I'm going to ask Copilot, in here, let me go in there. So it's logging on, hopefully. So maybe I'm going to ask Copilot, create a short four sentence story with no ending about a character, Lily getting a puppy for Christmas, okay? And I'm gonna ask that, okay? So Copilot is gonna create a story for me, okay? And here's my story, four sentence, but it has no ending, okay? So now I take this particular story, just copy, Take it to flip right and throw it in there. And now I can say, now I want to create a question for students to finish the story in flip. Okay, so they get to read the story that I created with Copilot, right? And now I'm going to say, I don't even have to create a question. I'm going to have Copilot create it. Now create a question students to finish the story in Microsoft Flip, right? So here's my question that I'm going to come up with. Um, one could be like, how do you think Lily uh, fell when she saw the puppy, right? Uh, what a sentence using an emotion word. Well, I'll see what it gives us. Here we go. How do you think Lily's parents got the puppy for her? Uh, what did they name it? How did Lily take care of it? So now I can take this and this becomes my prompt. So now we're bringing Copilot and Flip together for the kids to be able to use it. Okay, just kind of a, a quick idea of how I will use it together. All right, so I was able to open up. Um, oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll get out of that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. And Ricardo, I think for, I'm looking at the time right now and I want to make sure that Araceli has time to share mm -hmm. her part yeah. at the end. So I think after I show Book Creator, we should jump into the mm -hmm. last activity. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You know what it is. I won't yeah. mention it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, um, everyone, just to show you Book Creator. Here I am inside of Book Creator. I have a few books in here. Here's one I made about why California is the best. So I could click on that. And Ricardo said, show two tools. So I said, okay, fine. There's so many things I could do inside of Book Creator. Um, I could, obviously, I could add images. And that's how I got these images right here. It just searches for them with its own search engine. Or I could upload them myself. So that's one tool. I'm just going to count that as one that I showed. <laughs> and another one, one of our favorite ones, actually, is using AI. And it was the writing tool. And I'm going to use this one that's called Auto. And it's actually like a magic pen. So I am not the best um, artist, but I'm working on it. Um, so I'm just going to start drawing something and hope it identifies what it is. I'm just going to draw, let's say I wanted a starfish on the beach. <laughs> and then as I draw, you could see at the very top, it's guessing what it is I wanted it to show. So I think it did a pretty good job. So I'm going to click on it. And now I have an actual beautiful star on my, um, in my book. And so the students love this because they feel like true illustrators where they're going to draw something and then it's going to, <laughs> it's a heart. A heart wasn't even one of the- It, it looks like an apple to me. <laughs> it's an apple. <laughs> it does that to me. Well, let's just say it's an apple then. Fine. You can find apples in California. So I'm going to stop this. And so, um, is it done? Oh, and there they are. So students feel like, wow, I really am illustrating my story. So that was pretty cool. So lots of different things you can do with Book Creator. And if you want training on that, please let us know as well. Um, we're more than happy to Yeah, so we're going really quick through so many tools because we wanted to do so many, so, so many of them. But uh, <laughs> be sure that Araceli is able to support you with any of these tools. Book Creator is amazing when it comes to reading, speaking, listening, everything, bringing everything together when we talk about literacy. Soundtrap, okay? This is inside of Canva, Canvas right now. The ability for my students to create their own podcast. Pretty incredible. I, I, I wish I would have a chance to show it to you guys today and how it works. Uh, maybe we will if we have time. But we wanted to kind of give you, so Teresa, we're not giving them, giving them time to do one of them right now. Uh, no, we're not. Let's okay, the last so, so 
on your own, you have the ability inside of our Canvas course, just so you know, and I think Teresa showed you this, right? Uh, you have the ability to go in there and try them yourself. You should be able to try one of the, um, whether it be Canva, whether it be Microsoft Flip, Book Creator, or the podcast, we created the assignments for you to go ahead and try them, okay? But we did want to finish today because we don't want to run out of time with our um, rap battles, right? So, you know, again, going back to the AI infused classroom, right? Students should use digital tools to create show learning, right? And to talk about the process more in depth. That's what we're trying to do with our students, right? But we're gonna try to finish with our rap battle today. Um, Teresa, you want me to show this or? Um... Yeah, go for it, yeah, go for it. For the okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is a, a, a brand new tool that we think is pretty amazing. So think about the topic that you pick, right? What's your favorite movie? Uh, is that the one we're using, Teresa? <laughs> sure. Yeah, favorite. right. So uh, we're going to put the link uh, for you in a second. Um, and it's going to take you to, um, I have it open somewhere. Give me a second. I have to like find it where it is. I thought I had it open. Well, you know what? So Let me just go for it. Everyone, here. we're going to have a rap battle right now. Just get ready. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to open the link for the last assignment. Okay. And I love this particular tool. It's using AI to create the music, the lyrics based on the prompt that you give it. Okay. And it speaks multiple language so notice this particular song that was created am i sharing sound Teresa? am i sharing sound okay i can't hear, it. Forward. I can't hear it you can hear it no i can't okay let me go ahead and reshare again so i'm going to show you this particular because i think it's so, so amazing so let me go back in there let me go to my window too let me make sure that i'm sharing sound okay so let's say that i wanted to come in this particular app and you have the link right there okay i'm going to go in there and there's some samples of what people have created um, I've created something. So when you go create, make sure you sign in with Google for this one. Uh, your Microsoft will now work. So just use Google for this one. It's going to sign you in. Okay. And now I can come in here and I created a lot of music in here already. Um, I can create bachata, salsa, right? But we're doing a rap battle, right? So I'm going to create a rap. Uh, a rap. So I'm going to say um, a rap about uh, my favorite show. TV show, Friends. Okay, it's gonna think about it. Okay, and I'm gonna say create. Hopefully it's not down or it's being used right now. Oh, is it gonna be down, Teresa? It's okay, just demo one that you've already created. So I create, oh, there you go, there you go. So I created it, okay? So here it is. So I created something called Central Park and oh. Central Park Chronicles, okay? So we're gonna listen to what it did, okay? So here's what, so fast, just by what I said, okay? So here it comes. Here's my rap. I'm a favorite friends. Turn the boss, Monica, Joey, and wait you that I bond that'll never ever end. <laughs> Living life in the heart of New York City. They hang out at Central Park, sipping on coffee, cracking jokes, and laughing all day long. They support each other through thick and thin. When times get tough, yeah. they so, always stay strong. Friends. It always gives you two versions. I'll play the other one really quick. The lyrics are there too. So we're going to give you a second to go ahead and create. And please, it doesn't have to be a rap. Um, or it doesn't have to be a rap the first time, Teresa. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, it doesn't have to be a rap. I just like the name of a rap battle. But it can be <laughs> any genre. It can be country. It can be bachata. It can be whatever you want. Um, we're going to give you a moment. We're going to give you now the last few minutes to create your own song, whether it be rap or whatever genre, um, you can go through Canvas and you click on the last assignment, which is create your original song. And those of you who are not in Canvas right now, will give you that link as well. Um, I'm gonna stick it in the chat, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, as you're doing that, um, Araceli, that was the very last thing we were going to do. So the rest of the time you can go ahead and um, they're working yeah. on that right now. So but, yeah, but think about how think much time you want to give them. <laughs> I just wanted to say, think about, you know, it, it creates the song for you and the music, right? But now I can take it to the next level and I can say, okay, now let's create a podcast about that particular song that you created with AI, right? And now they're going to have to tell me about the lyrics, you know, the music and everything that we might want them to do. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I think I don't know if anybody else. Oh, my mind is spinning with all these Too much, tools. Yeah. And I know it's <laughs> a lot. I, and I always, you know, whenever I go to great PDs, I always think, okay, I'm going to put some of this on the shelf and I'm going to come back to it. Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not ready right now. And that's why I love that, you know, we're recording this so you can take it into, you know, small little parts and play with one thing, you know, and that's how we keep adding to our toolbox. Just, you know, one little thing, another little thing. And the fun part is, 
that when we give students these kind of platforms, they run with it. And it's amazing what they come back with, right? Like, oh, I didn't even know you could <laughs> do that, right? So it's really exciting. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and share, uh, just, you know, kind of emphasize um, some of the things that, that you talked about. And I'm gonna go here, let me see here. And I kind of had shown this one. Uh, and we talk about, you know, ChatGPT, but also other AI tools. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, just, you know, talk about how the rest of the world has also viewed it. And when this came out, especially ChatGPT, um, you know, some people gravitated to it, other people are like, whoa. And so um, I'm going to share with, uh, I, I believe, uh, the IB program, right, the International Baccalaureate program also shared, and thank you for uh, Josipa who shared this with me, where they said, nope, we need to embrace it. It's here to stay. It's not going to go away. And so a lot of what Teresa and Ricardo were sharing. So what I like to, you know, my kind of take on this is we need to be aware of what our students, you know, have access to. So let's make it explicit. Let's put it on that syllabus. If you wrote your syllabus at the beginning of the year, let's take it out and hey, we're about to write an essay. I want to reemphasize what, you know, how AI plays in my classroom. Make it very clear so the students are not like, oh, I gotcha, right? It's not a I gotcha type of moment. And so what are your expectations? What kind of code do you have? Uh, can they use it? Can they not? How much of it? Right. So that like Teresa was saying, uh, it's not this, uh, you know, game or, or of, of trying to catch them. Uh, and because, you know, again, they, they know about it. They, they've heard about it. Uh, so let's bring it in. Let's write it down. Make, maybe even do a, a social contract. Ask them how much of this should they use? I know my daughter is very kind of anti um, using chat GPT because she's a musician and she hates the idea that musicians are being uh, you know, their music is being used. Um, and I think Ricardo had mentioned a while back how, was it Kanye? No, who is it? It was Drake and The Weeknd, yeah. <laughs> Drake and The Weeknd. AI created a, a right collaboration song, right? And it went to number one on Spotify and the next day it had to be taken down because it was created with AI. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so, you know, have a Socratic seminar about this. Have a debate. How much should AI be used in the classroom? So that would be a great, again, bringing those voices out. So I want to talk about how do we get kids to maybe not want to solely resort to something like AI? Well, there's a song a while back called Let's Give Them Something to Talk About. Let's give them something to write about, right? Some of our prompts are very dry, disconnected. Our students feeling like this, you know, education, the classroom is not their space. So how can we create a space for them? I don't know if you noticed, I know I've heard and noticed a lot, kids coming back from distance learning, you know, came back kind of still with screens off, right? They're on mute. They have headphones on, hoodie on, mask on. Like they don't want to be seen. And so we need to pull them out. If your students are not saying hello to you, teach them how to respond, right? Teach them how to verbalize their thoughts. And I think that's what kind of we need to humanize the, the right, our society again. And so get their voice, invite them to be part of the class conversation. So, you know, how are currently, how are their voices being amplified? Many of our students actually are not very, uh, you know, it, it surprises me. They say they're shy, but then, you know, they show me that they have a YouTube account and they also do TikTok and they're constantly, you know, chatting and taking videos. So they're amplifying their voice, their style, even promoting their hairstyle, their makeup, so forth. But yet in the classroom, it seems like they shut down. So... How can we get them to share their ideas? So I'm going to go ahead and send you this. And this is kind of like a choice board for you. And all of these are hyperlinks. But basically, some of these are little YouTube videos. As you know, I do the newsletter for the district and I get to go into classrooms. So here's an invitation. If you have a student project, something that you're doing student-centered, invite me in. I take some pictures, do some interviews. And the students are talking, right? So some of these, for example, project-based writing. Maybe the students made something in your class and they're so excited because of what they made. Have them, you know, talk, 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 and then they write about it. This again, the idea is to, how do we get them to, to want to share their authentic creative voice? Here's another one. Have a class discussion, right? And have them bring in that discussion as part of the writing. If they did a debate, if they did a Socratic seminar. I was always of the mind that it was, I'm going to give a heavy credit on the process of writing, not just the final product. So celebrating growth is really the name of the game. So a lot of students shut down on writing because they think writing 
it needs to be a perfect form at the very end. And they've already labeled themselves. I'm not good at writing. Um, oh my goodness. Every time I meet someone and I tell them I'm an English teacher all the time, every single time. Oh, I better watch my grammar because that's what they equate good writing with just good grammar, right? Good spelling. And no, there's so much more. Right? Writing is a form of communication, but our students feel that maybe they can't share what, what they're thinking because somebody's going to be judging them, probably their own peers. And right. And, and if we're quick to kind of grade them all the time. So celebrating growth, what else? Um, talking about current events, right? What's going on in their world, inviting them. They're very opinionated. But again, in the classroom, how can we get them to share those opinions? Um, uh, finally, here's a couple other ones. Again, um, allowing students to select topics, right? Uh, having a writing portfolio where they're sharing metacognitive kind of activities. So they wrote their essay. Even if the kid, let's say, wrote it all and, and got it all from AI. All right, great, let's do essay diagramming. You're going to now tell me, where's the thesis? Where's the concrete evidence? Where's the, and how good was that written? So have the students really dissect the writing rather than here's my essay, give me a grade and, I, and move on. So having them spend some time thinking about that. Okay, and so a, a couple of things, and I'm gonna show you just one more slide. This was from the um, California Teachers of English uh, conference that I got to go to, and it, uh, this will be a hyperlink. And basically what you have here is just tons and tons of resources of ideas to get students writing. So it could be things such as short videos. So I love, if you haven't seen the video, a like, it's a little uh, animated film, a spoken word, right? TED Talks, song lyrics, uh, art. So getting students to want to say something is gonna be your key for that authentic uh, voice and getting them to move away from always resorting to, to someone else doing the writing, AI doing the writing for me, right? And like I said, I agree that it should be you know, a collaborative work. AI with me, it's like a little bit of my coach, it's helping me out, but I'm not gonna solely give over my voice, right? Because or else we're gonna have a silent generation and we can't afford that. So that's pretty much it for me. And if you want any of us to come in, I, I know I have done some model lessons where you can kind of take a seat and kind of see how the technology is working. Sometimes we get a little nervous of using new technology, but I have gone in and given lessons on how to use Microsoft Sway, how to use the flip interviews. Um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna start using also the book creator and work with Teresa and, and Ricardo. Uh, but you can always email us if you wanna set something up or if you wanna learn more about it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and I'm gonna go ahead and post the timesheet. And we have just a few more minutes, but if there's any questions or comments, this would be a good time. And yeah, let me go ahead and send that to everyone. Uh, hopefully you found some of this beneficial to you. And uh, please email me if you are using a chat GPT and I could feature you in our district newsletter. If your students are writing, right, uh, pieces like this that have to do with current events, things like that, please let us know. And I do want to thank Teresa and Ricardo for uh, coming on board today and we have, they have so much to share. And again, like we said, uh, uh, Ricardo, if you guys can also uh, share some of the things that you might be that might be coming up, other PDs that you might be doing, uh, or also uh, some of the PDs that you have already done. I know you do a lot with the VRs and so forth. Yeah, I think as uh, as you said, right, um, uh, just like you, we are here to support. If there is a tool that you saw today and that you might want to bring into your classroom, you know, book creator, right, the podcast one or anything, we are here to support and, and we're, we're willing to come out there and, and do some model lessons for you too. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's our job. <laughs> Teresa? Thank you. Uh, no, just to piggyback off of that, and, you know, after this training, we always have some teachers who ask us, you know, would you be willing to train our whole staff, you know, on this topic? It's just such, such an important topic, and we have been able to go to a few sites, so we, we would gladly, gladly do that. So if you need us to train the rest of your site or maybe other stakeholders um, around you, just let us know, and we're, we'd be happy to help. And, and just to add, you know, sometimes I have teachers who do say, but, you know, our students still need to know how to write an essay, yes. right, very paragraph. We're not saying don't teach writing. They're still learning the skill of a good thesis, a strong logical paragraph, but they can also do this through a podcast. They could also do this through a, a newsletter where they're writing their evidence and citing their sources and so forth. It's just that our students do live in a visual world. We all do now, right? Analyzing of memes. I think that should be a whole college course now. 
<laughs> How do we use uh, social media and so forth, right? Yeah. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Oh, we didn't hear any of the songs. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm curious. I didn't know we had that. That's awesome. Wants <laughs> oh, to stay and play with their song. <laughs> Everyone just disappears right now. Because <laughs> they're like, do I create a cabbage patch or do I do a rap song or do it? <laughs> oh, you didn't mention. Thank it you, though. thank you, everyone. <laughs> we can stop recording, out of silly. Uh, okay, dokie. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick picture of those of you who are here, if you want to turn on cameras, but I would like to take a little picture of, let me see if I could get the different view here. Oh, I forgot okay. about the picture. Thank you. If you want to be uh, in the picture, <laughs> turn on your camera. <laughs> All right. I know. I was here. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a few more minutes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yay. All right. All Thank right. you.